In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a triptych. Now, a triptych is an image which has been divided into three equal panels. And uh, yeah, how do we get those three equal panels? Well, I've got a little bit of a cunning workaround. It involves using, if we come to the view menu, we're going to be using rulers. The next thing we're going to be using is the crop tool. Now, when we click on the crop tool, we need to come down to the tool options. And under the tool options, you can see I've got none selected. We need to come up to this one here. This is going to be for the ruler third. So click on this one. The next change we need to make is I've got five by seven. Make sure that you've got no restrictions. Right, let's put that out of the way. Let's take a look at these three equal panels. I'm going to bring my crop tool up. I'm going to click, I'm going to drag it over the image, releasing it. There's panel one panel two, panel three. That's the vertical. You could also try it in the horizontal as well. That could be pretty interesting and well worth experimenting with. But back to this, we need to mark these out. This is where the ruler comes in because if you bring your cursor over into the area of the ruler, now if you click down, drag it out, you'll notice that dotted line. That is a guide. We're going to pull this guide over to the first set of dotted lines here in the vertical, releasing it. You notice that green area there running right the way through. There's our first guide coming back, clicking in the area of the ruler, dragging it out over. So we come over that second or the first dotted line even. Get it right in a minute. That looks pretty good like that. That is the end of the crop tool. For now, it'll be back right coming down. We're going to click on this, which is to cancel the current operation. There's our three panels. Next, how are we going to select these three panels? Well, we're going to use the marquee tool. So if I click on the marquee tool, once again, down to tool options, make sure you have got the rectangular marquee tool. So that is important. Make sure you've got the rectangular marquee tool. Oh, the other very important thing is make sure that feather is on zero. You don't want to feather this at all. So make sure that's on zero. Right, let's bring it up into this area here. We're going to click down. I'm going to drag it over, coming up to our first guide bringing it down into that area there would be pretty good. We're now going to use command J control J that's command J control J which will copy this selection and paste it in as a new layer. There it is. If I just switch it off, you can see there's our first panel right while we're at it. Let's just double click. We're going to call this what it is, which is left, right? Click on the background layer. You need to make sure you're working on the background layer. We have still got the marquee tool so we can click down. We can drag it out over the center panel. Something like that would be pretty good using command J control J again. That's command J control J to duplicate it. There it is. There is our center panel. Let's just click and call it what it is, which is center. Next, we're going to click back on the background layer. We're going to come over. We're going to click on this and clicking down, dragging it out over that area there. Command J control J. That's command J control J has now duplicated that selection. There it is. It's layer th one again. Let's call it right. So there's our right panel. Great stuff. Next, we're going to clear the guides. So if we come up to view, we can go down to clear guides while we're at it as well. Let's just go back to view and we're going to uncheck the ruler. It has gone. It has done its job. If I switch off the background layer, guess what? You're not going to see any difference, are you? <laughs> right. So we need to give ourselves a bit more canvas space with this. Now, remember I said about the crop tool and it'll be back. Well, let's pick it up. There's our crop tool. We're going to click. We're going to drag it over the image. I love using this way of extending our canvas space. In fact, I rarely use that canvas size. I much prefer this because you can actually see how much you're increasing the canvas space by. Let me show you. We're going to come down to the bottom here. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to press the Alt or the Option key. And as we pull it out, you can see there it is coming into the work surface. I'm going to release my mouse at that area there. Let's zoom out a bit as well. So I'm just going to zoom out. You can see exactly what we're working with. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to uh, click back on this and just pull that down a little bit more in the bottom come into the sides, pressing Alt or Option again. Because you're holding down the Alt or Option, the two sides come out equally, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to take it to that area. Looks pretty good. I'm going to click the tick, click in the tick. Look at that. It has added a white edge around here. Now, the reason why it's a white edge, take a look over here. The background color here is white. So whatever the background color is here, it'll take it for the edge of the border. 
going to click on this because I want to fill the entire image. In fact, I'm just going to switch this off so we can see what we're doing. You can see there it is giving it a nice white matte border. But we're going to come to Edit. We're going to go to Fill. And when the Fill dialog box opens, Content, Use. Make sure we got white there. I'm going to click OK to that. Job nearly done. Let's switch these back on. Right, let's zoom in to fit on screen. So using Command-0, zero, Control-0. Zero. To split these panels apart, I'm going to use the Move tool. Now, first of all, let's come up to the left panel. Let's pick up the Move tool. Now, I'm not actually going to use the Move tool itself. In other words, I'm not going to click down, I'm not going to move it across. Instead, we are going to use the keyboard. Now, with the Move tool selected, we're working on the left-hand panel. I'm going to press and hold down Shift. Why am I holding down Shift? Well, I'm also going to use the left arrow. And because I'm holding down Shift, when I press the left arrow once, it jumps up to 10 pixels. If I didn't hold down the left hand arrow, it would just jump up 1 pixel. So it takes a lot longer. Let's just move that back. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Let's take it out 70. Let's come down to the right. Once again, pressing and holding down Shift, holding down Shift. Now using the right hand arrow on the keyboard, we're going to go out to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and once again 70. In fact, looking at it, I'm going to take it one more. Let's click back on the left, pressing down Shift, left hand arrow, moving it out. That looks pretty good like that. Great stuff. Right, let's give it a bit of definition. So for definition, let's go down to the effects. With the effects, let's uh, check. Yeah, we got stars, just what we want. And on stars, the drop down menu here, we have got drop shadow. If we double click on this, you can see there's the drop shadow. If I come down to this one here, see it's a softer one. That looks pretty good. If we come to this one here, you can see the way that's really standing out. Quite like that. Let's try that one. Right, let's be a little bit brave. Right, now that we've done that, so I'm going to come back to Layers. Now with Layers, you get this little FX icon here, because when we're under the effects itself, you can't actually do a huge amount with it. In fact, I can move that around, which I don't want to do, but I can't move the shadow itself. But, coming back to Layers, if we double-click on the FX icon, that brings up the Style Settings. Now I can move this around, and the reason why I want to move it around, have a look at your image. You can see the way the lighting's coming. You can see I've got a shadow coming through here, even though it's a painted effect. You can still make out the shadow. So I want to sort of line it up with that. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to place it in this position. Here would be pretty good. Right, like that. Let's click OK. No, hang on. Got an idea. How about giving it a little bevel? So I'm going to click on the bevel. That looks good like this. The lighting again is now matching up. It's using the angle of the, of the lighting here. And if I move the bevel up into this area, you can see the way that's working. That's looking pretty good. You can see it's around that edge there, the lighter part, then the darker shadow area. In fact, if we come to the lighting itself, I'm going to swipe across. So I've now highlighted where it says 52. I'm going to use the arrows on the keyboard again. This time it's the up and the down arrow. If I use the down arrow, you can see it takes it down to 50, 51. If I use the up arrow, you can see the way it increases it, the angle going up. I'm going to bring it round into that area there, changing the angle of the lighting. You'll notice it's not quite so dark on this area, but it's darker on the bottom. That looks perfect. We're now going to click on OK. You could say that was a little bit fiddly and we need to do it to the two other panels. Yeah, it could be a bit tricky, couldn't it? But got a bit of a cunning plan. All you need to do is come over to where it says effects. Now where it's got the effects, press and hold down the Alt or the Option key, holding down Alt or Option, click on the effects and as you drag it away, you'll notice you've got double arrows. Bring it down to where it says center, release your mouse. Yeah told you it was a cunning plan bringing it down to the right panel there it is all three are now done there is our triptych rather than having a plain white background let's try something a little bit different so let's just come to this one for now I'm going to use command J control J so we've duplicated our background layer what we're now going to do is we're going to go back to effects now with effects we're going to come from drop shadow we're going to use pattern and when pattern opens how about a brick wall Let's double click on that. There's our brick wall. I like the way that's looking. I'm not sure I'm entirely convinced about the colour of our brick wall, 
but if we come down to painted wallboard let's just double click on this look what happens we can now change the color that looks pretty good you could also of course use a an adjustment layer of hue saturation change it there but I like that there is our triptych looks good against the background now you could have this if I just rename this as uh, wall so we know exactly what's on this particular one because you can't actually see it. it is a layer star but if you switch it off if you want to you can have it on a plain white background or you can have it on a wall I quite like the wall so I think we'll leave it like that there it is there is the finished image there's loads of different options you can use try it on the horizontal as well as the vertical try the different backgrounds until the next time it is happy imaging and take care